I spend a lot of time strategizing and, and being still so that I can hear what God, the universe, my higher power is trying to tell me so that I'm not wasting time because I'm not about wasting time. Sure. Um, uh, and so as I you know, walk my path, there is a lot of time where it seems like nothing is happening. Like people will often ask, um, oh, especially in the theater, I come from the theater right. and what's your next show? And like everybody in the cast will have their next show that they're doing. I would be like, I don't know. So I've had to get comfortable with not knowing. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of life in general, but especially as an actor, the unknown. Right. Um, and I've had to, you know, make friends with the unknown. <laughs> hey guys, what's good? Welcome to the Cosign Life. If you're watching this video, that means you co-sign us and we co-sign you. So here are a couple of ways to support us at Cosign Magazine. Number one. View the description below, click the link, and purchase an issue of Cosign Magazine. It's like this, this one right here, physical. You can purchase this. Number two, you can also support us by purchasing Cosign merch. Hit the link below, and it'll take you to all our past merch items, and we'd love to have your support and see you wear Cosign Magazine. Y'all for tuning in to another episode of Cosign Conversations. Today we have a very important, extremely special guest. We have Angela Lewis. She's a mother, an actress, and an activist. And she's also Aunt Louie on this hit show Snowfall. How are you doing today? I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. I can't complain. Um, I have a 14-year-old daughter myself, and I've been doing Cosign for about 10 or 11 years. And I definitely noticed that a lot has changed, you know, since I've had her and been working. So I wanted to know for you, um, how has life changed for you, first off, since being a mother? And then secondly, how has life changed since being on Snowfall? Mm. Oh, man. Well, being a mom, you know, it's interesting. I don't know, like, what has changed. I think being a mom has made me more of who I was, who I was always becoming. Right. Um, I, I think I'm a pretty patient person and being a mom has definitely allowed for <laughs> a deep dive into patience. Right. Um, and I like to think that um, I am into getting to know a person mm. and uh, it's been a joy getting to know my daughter and understanding that she is not me right. and, <laughs> and that uh, my job is to nurture who she already is. She's already a completely autonomous human being with thoughts and feelings and opinions and a perspective even. You know, and so my job is to not um, squelch that, to make her, you know, do what I say when I say it, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but to, you know, help her to understand what I'm saying, why I'm saying it, and then to give her choices for and, sure. and for her to know that she can, there are choices to be made. She can make those choices and then she has to live with the choice that she's made. Not you that. know, <laughs> so um, it's definitely been a deep dive into how to check my ego and how to uh, navigate a whole different human being, you right. know, that and then Snowfall. So Aunt Louie is a pretty powerful force, right? Sure. And um, she don't back down. She's very <laughs> vocal, right. very, you know, all those things. And I think historically in my life, I've been, uh, I'm pretty laid back. I'm Same. pretty, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty, I can be timid and I can be um, insecure in myself, you know, and playing Aunt Louie has forced me to 
step into my power um, and feel what that what that is. And yeah. and I, I think I've done that before, but it, it's one thing to step in your power is a whole other thing to live there, right. you know? Um, uh, Louis has helped me to be able to say what I want, mm. to articulate the vision that I have for myself, um, and to not be afraid of somebody laughing at that vision or being like, yeah, okay, you right. know, like they gonna be people gonna react how they react. That's not my problem. My job is to have a vision. Mm -hmm. And my job is to implement that vision and to implement that you often have to articulate that to other people. And um, yeah, um, stepping into Louis shoes has allowed me to, to be able to learn how to do that uh, emphatically. Definitely. You know, in a recent episode, you, you discussed how, you know, as a black woman, you have to be, you know, ironclad, you know, about your decisions, right? That was a powerful yeah. speech that you did. Um, and you kind of spoke on it right now but do you feel um that that's something you have to live by right now as you know yourself as angela lewis or is it something that you're, you're still working on making sure that you're you know the moves that you make are ironclad like how how louis has maneuvered um i don't know that angela would describe it as being ironclad i think i tend to give myself and life a little bit more grace right um I do think that very much like Louis, it is my experience that people don't want to give me, and I don't know if it's because I'm a woman or because I'm black or a black woman, and you know, come from a, a poor, you know, background or you know, who knows what it is, but they don't want to give you the credit due. Right. They, I have been underestimated the majority of my life right. um and so I do feel like I've had to be smarter quicker uh more on top of things uh I used to <laughs> so I used to bartend as one of my side jobs <clears throat> so I had a um wider array or a wider knowledge of spirits and wines than right. one might think <laughs> and so I would go into a not I lived in New York for um, 13 years and I would go into a really nice like hotel bar and the bartenders would like not look at me you know not pay much attention and then finally when they would come over I would order something like a Woodford knee or uh, a Yamazaki you know and and oh my god oh 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 like, okay okay <laughs> right you know, or I would say you know Woodford and they'd be like oh would you like ice and I'd be like ice please <laughs> and, oh see you know, what you talking about yeah and so <laughs> I used to enjoy that you know that kind of like yeah you have underestimated who you're dealing with here right. um and so all that to say that I don't know that I've had to be ironclad or I feel like, excuse me, or I feel like I need to be ironclad, but I know that I work hard right. for what I have and that if I came in a different package, I would already be mm. five steps right. closer to whatever goal I'm trying to, you know, attain. I do know that. So. And, and while we're on that, do you have, a set of, of end goals that you work to strive to all the time, or are you just new opportunities come and you tackle them as they come? Hmm. I think it's a little of both. I think I have, um, I have goals and a vision for, for how I see my life. Right. And then I feel like I, I, I say this, uh, I've said this before to, I don't know, friends and family, whatever, but I feel like I spend a lot of my time doing this, like mm -hmm. waiting for those doors to like line up so I can go through because right. I'm totally not into like banging against doors and, mm -hmm. and walls. And so I spend a lot of time strategizing and, and being still so that I can hear what God, the universe, my higher power is trying to tell me so that I'm not wasting time because I'm not about wasting time. 
sure. um, uh, and so as I you know, walk my path, there is a lot of time where it seems like nothing is happening. Like people will often ask, um, oh, especially in the theater, I come from the theater, right. and what's your next show? And like everybody in the cast will have their next show that they're doing. I would be like, I don't know. So I've had to get comfortable with not knowing. Mm -hmm. And that's a big part of life in general, but especially as an actor, the unknown. Right. Um, and I've had to, you know, make friends with the unknown. <laughs> uh, for sure. And uh, yeah, so it's a little bit of both. It's, it's big picture stuff, but also I do uh, absolutely take one thing at a time and and, and let those things, uh, I try to stay flexible so that those things that happen one at a time can kind of inform my, inform my next move. Right, not for sure. And, and speaking on next move, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, a lot of our communities is like, man, what is, what is Louie doing? <laughs> Why is she going against the family? You know? um, yeah. I want to ask you this, a, a, a flip to it. So as a mother, as a woman, do you ever feel like there's a situation in real life to where it's okay to go against the family? Yes. Okay. I mean, listen, <laughs> I have an amazing family. Right. And they have always been supportive. But what if they weren't? True. Family is made up of individuals. Mm -hmm. and everybody is not going to see things the way that you see things everybody is not going to see you the way you see yourself right and how are you going to help the family if you can't help yourself right so in real life um you know i didn't have to move to new york and then move to la i could have stayed home in detroit Right. But then who would I be helping if I wasn't going after my dream? Mm. You know, then and now, now the help can be a little more financial right. now that, you know what I mean? But, but even, even before the money came into play, how am I helping anybody if I'm squandering myself? That makes sense. And I think for Louie, If you had a job mm -hmm. and you and that job had a boss mm -hmm. and your boss said, you know, okay, I'm gonna give you this job. And you said, okay, I'll take that job. But you know what? I got this person over here who's gonna come in and buy all of your product mm -hmm. so that you got money coming in. And your boss said, okay. And then you said, and you know what? I'm gonna do this thing over here. This, this part of the job that is crucial to the success of it. Right. I'm going to do it almost exclusively. Right. And your boss said, okay. And then you said, and you know what? I got an idea for this, this predicament that you're in. How about you do this? And your boss did it and it went great. Right. And you kept saying that you had all of these amazing ideas and your boss is like, yes, 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 yes. The business is thriving because a lot in large because of you. Right. In the meantime, your boss is screaming on you, <laughs> going zero to a hundred real quick. You like this is fucking crazy. Right, right. And then you know some suggestions he takes, some he doesn't. And when he doesn't take your suggestions, you end up getting shot, almost killed. I mean, how uh, how long would you allow for this situation to keep happening? Right. Wouldn't it? Wouldn't you say? this thing is making money because of me. Mm -hmm. I have most of the good ideas. Mm -hmm. I'm level-headed. I think it's time for me to start my own business. Gotcha. Yeah, it, it agree, I agree with you, but you know how our community is. <laughs> I do, and I understand, <laughs> but I want our community to see when right. you're being abused and underappreciated so right. much so that later the boss is like, you know what, I'm so sorry. Right. You have gone and, and forged your own way. And now I realize that you were a huge, I should have made you partner. Right. And you just like, mm -hmm, you should have, but. That's too late. Too late. <laughs> so those in our community, 
who are not seeing your own worth. Right. I empower you. <laughs> See yourself. Rise up. Nah, fact. Having relationships all the time, man. You abuse your spouse so long and yes. so much. And it'll finally get to the point where there's nothing you can do to, you know, right. thank you for it. Well, but right. but I but I had to ask because I recently interviewed uh Christy Loft and Jannar from from Power. Yeah. Well, yeah. And he was telling me crazy stories of how people treat him now <laughs> since he's going against the family. He's like, man, it's just a character, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it's real. My DMs are crazy. I'm like, oh, my God, people. <laughs> no, I know they have to understand. Um, but real quick, I want to kind of get back to uh, to to the mother motherhood aspect. I had um, mm -hmm. one of our community members, Stefania, posed a question. She's a new mother. And she wanted to ask, um, how do you deal with um, how do you deal with mom guilt while you're on set? So being away. Mm. From, so she wanted to ask that as she's a working mother, um, fashion designer and, and all this stuff. So she wanted to ask you that as well. Yeah. Um, I have to re remember that my daughter needs to see me at work. Mm. She needs to see mommy doing her thing. Right. Mommy is doing the damn thing because if she doesn't see me doing it, then she might think that she can't do it. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm her first influence. I'm sure. her first shero. Um, she sees me doing it. She knows she can do it. She, she, and also it was important for me, for her to learn that mommy goes, but mommy always comes back right. because that will allow her to know like now she, you know, she had gymnastics today. She's bye, mommy. Right. <laughs> I'm like, have a good day at gymnastics. Have a good day at work, mommy. You know what I mean? So she knows we go, we do our thing, and then we come back at the end of the day. And that was really important for me. Um, and then also, I'm still a whole human being and a whole grown woman. You know, <laughs> I have to go to work. I have to go out on date night with my husband. I have to go out for girls night with my girls. Like I got to be a whole human being because if I'm not, then I have, I'm depleting myself and I don't have anything to give to her. Nah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And on the flip side, while we're on this, you know, Franklin's mother is going through a lot. She had to accept who her son is and what he does. How would you handle that situation if your daughter grows up and does something that you don't accept? Do you let her be her? Do you inter intervene? Like, how would you handle that situation? <sighs> Man, um, yeah, I, I like to think, you know, I don't know. I will know when I, <laughs> when I get there. But right. I, I want my daughter to know, again, that she has choices. Um, I want to help her to see as many of those choices as possible mm -hmm. before she, you know, jumps in. But at the end of the day, it's her life. Right. And, you know, I'll be there to celebrate with her. I'll be there to, you know, offer my shoulder for her to cry on. I'll be there to encourage her, mm -hmm. but it's, it's her life. And, um, uh, yeah, if what she is doing doesn't uh, jive with my spirit and my energy, then I'm sorry, boo-boo, I can't join you on that, <laughs> on that route. Right. You know, I, I, I think I'm a little different from Sissy in that way. I don't <laughs> think I'm going to be, right. you know. All hands on that. Hip. Yeah, you know, <laughs> even if my child has to you know god forbid go to jail or do this like well right hopefully you learn and i tried to you know help you and right you know but you know motherhood is an interesting thing you know you you don't know how you're gonna react to something for instance with breastfeeding i thought i was gonna be done like okay and then i was getting ready to wean and i was like oh no i'm not ready <laughs> <laughs> So nah. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> no, nah, for sure. And I just have two more questions. Uh, second to last question, I have to ask, how is it or what have you learned working with, you know, 
with the late, you know, John Singleton and currently working with Damson. What have you learned working with, you know, greats like that? And plus yourself, you come from, you know, theater. So all y'all are amazing. But what have you learned from each other, working with each other um, over time? Yeah. So John used to say all the time to me, <laughs> we'd be doing a scene and he'd be behind the camera. How about be more Detroit? Come on, get more Detroit. And I was like, what? Listen, just because you're from Detroit does not mean you know how to shoot them out, you know, like whatever. And <laughs> I used to get so offended. Um, but what I came to understand is that he was telling me to stand in my power. You know, let's go. Like, you can't be shy. You can't be, you know, um, shying away from from being up in somebody's face you can't be shying away from from the thing Louie is a boss and she's always been a boss which is how she got here to where right. we are today um and so he he is the first person who who started to uh drop those seeds of of, of standing being in my power right and from good old Damson, what have I learned from Damson? Uh, <laughs> Damson is great. Damson, he goes for it, right. you know, as we can tell from, from the, the footage that we have. Mm -hmm. And I've certainly learned to, to really go for it. Right. Um, and also how to be a leader. Damson's a great leader. You know, he's number one on our show. And he, he leads with um, humor and charm and respect for the other actors and for all the crew. Right. Um, yeah, he, he's, a, he's a, a wonderful team leader and that is certainly inspirational. That's amazing. And last question before we get out of here, you know, barbershop talks, where do you rank, you know, Without being biased, where do you rank Snowfall in the list of new classics? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Number one. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. I just of had course. to. But yeah, I, I have definitely <laughs> Snowfall up there. It's one of those things to where, man, it's a it's it's a cult following. You know, we love to see you on there. Super excited for, you know, to see the end of season five and what the last, you know, season six comes to be. Um, we at Cosign always Cosign you and have your support. Um, before we get out of here, I just want to give you time to you know address our audience with anything you may have coming up, uh, just to say your last piece and anything like that. Yeah, so follow me on Instagram at Love Angela Lewis L U V Angela Lewis, and there you will um, see that I have a new production company called Blue Remedy. So it's under branding now. So we're getting our website and our logo and stuff together, but we already have a. a, a nice size slate of unscripted scripted animation podcasts and stuff that we're shopping around yeah so big things coming so check look out for that and then I also have a nonprofit called birth village that is also being branded so you'll start to see my website and my logos and all that if you just um follow me on instagram and this um birth village is in the black maternal health space and we're all about bringing education and access to resources to black mamas and babies and families um, because we should be not just surviving our births, we should be thriving. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, before we get out of here though, let's get a quick boomerang if you don't mind. Okay. That's okay. All right, so I'm gonna just do a quick boomerang. Uh, right here and on three, two, one. It's amazing. I love Let it. Let me see. I got to see it. Can you see? Uh, can you see that? Hold on. Yes. There it goes. Got it? Yes. <laughs> I love I love it. It. Thank you so much for your time. We'll be a fan. And, uh, congratulations as always. Thank you so right. much. This was Thank great. You. Thank you. All right. you. Enjoy your day. You too. Bye bye. bye. Hey guys, what's good? Thanks for supporting Cosign Magazine by watching this video. If you really enjoyed this content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share.